So if you've been following this channel at all, you know that we're pretty good about guessing what's gonna come up in The Chosen. I wish you weren't quite so good at your guessing. You're clearly the best. And we have a lot of guesses about season three and what's gonna happen there, including some things that are gonna happen with Matthew specifically. So Matthew has been changing all the way from season one to season two and into season three. And we've gotten a lot of hints from Dallas and the team, even a part of a script that we've talked about in a previous video. So how is Matthew gonna impact this season and i think that there's some things that we can break down and some lessons that we can learn along the way of how matthew's dealing with a lot of these things so let's talk about it Welcome to Snipe Life, where we spoil the chosen and we talk about what's upcoming in the future episodes. Just kidding, of course. We don't really know what's upcoming. These are just guesses from us and things that we think are gonna be applicable to the future seasons. Although today we're gonna be talking about Matthew specifically. I think Matthew has changed so much from season one to season two, and we can expect that same amount of change into season three as he becomes more a part of the group and as he becomes more accepted in the group. But I think first we have to go back, right? Now we've seen the opening scene of season three released by Dallas himself. He released a part of this script. And why would he do that? Because he wants us to see a little bit about where this season is going. And he was really excited about this scene in particular. So this shows us clearly that we're gonna see some of Matthew's past as we dive into what this looks like. But why is this important at all, right? I think in order for us to understand how far Matthew has come, we have to understand where he began in the first place. Because if Matthew is to keep on having this development in his character, we have to see actually how bad it was for Matthew. Not necessarily to him, but from him as well. What type of person was he as a tax collector and as a son and all of that? And so I think we're gonna be able to see more and more of that as we go through season three. Now, there are a few things that bring us to this conclusion specifically, one of them being his outfits that he wears. Remember in season one, if you had an eagle eye, you would remember that Matthew had two distinct outfits. One that he wore more in commonplace when he was walking around the commoners, when he was walking around the people, and then another one that he wore while he was operating as the Roman tax collector. Now, the one that we recognize is kind of the normal garb that he wears, that white coat with the insignias all over it. But then the other one is this yellow outfit where he has kind of these sashes that go around. It's way more Roman in style than the other things that he wears. Now, this only happens in season one. In fact, in season two, we only see him wear one outfit the entire season. And I think this is extremely intentional by the team because we've heard specifically from Dallas that Matthew is gonna have a costume change in season three of The Chosen. And this has a lot to do with the outward indication of an inward change. And while I think that Matthew's change is going to be a very impactful part of season three, I think the question remains, how are people going to respond to him in general? I think not just his friends and the other disciples, but his parents as well. How are we going to see them in season three? And not in a flashback, but in the present time of the show. It's going to be interesting to see how everything kind of comes together for Matthew. His parents are gonna struggle with this dichotomy of seeing their son as an enemy for so long, but also being so proud of him of where he is right now. And Matthew's gonna have to go through that relational hardship as well. Remember, everyone sees him as a tax collector. They don't see him as a rabbi student. And so this is gonna be a total shift in how people see him. And he's gonna have to work really hard in order to share that with them, I think. And we know for a fact that Matthew is going to encounter his parents again. We've seen the scene with his father that Dallas actually leaked to us, but we also have seen some behind the scenes photos and video of both his parents being there. We are done with day two and we actually got done early, a couple hours early. That's how efficient we're getting because we have the crew that's been back and worked together and had another scene with Paris today as Matthew went really, really well. The very first scene of season three. Do you guys know your pet sheep's names? Johnny, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually see a couple of different scenes with Roman guards as well that include them. So as we can kind of put together from all of this behind the scenes footage, we see that Matthew is going to have an encounter with his parents again. I, I know that part of this is going to be back in time, but I truly believe that we're going to see Matthew's parents return in the present storyline as well, as Matthew begins to reconcile all of these things that are happening in his life as well. And this to me brings up so many thoughts of how this can impact us. 
Have you ever had that moment in your life when you were so changed by Christ that the rest of the world had to kind of catch up with you, that they had to realize the new person that you were? And I think this reminds me of a specific verse in 2 Corinthians where it talks about being a new creation. So let me read this to you. 2 Corinthians 5, 15 through 17. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Just as Jesus talks about in John chapter three to be born again, Nicodemus didn't fully understand, but this is what he means. As we begin to follow Christ and as we begin to build the kingdom here with him, we have a vastly different understanding of what's going on in our lives as well, right? Which means that the old part of us is dead. Again, Christ asks us to pick up our cross and to walk with him, to die to ourselves and to walk with him. And we do that by leaving our old lives behind, the broken lives, the sinful lives, the evil lives, the dark lives behind, and beginning to walk in the light as he is in the light, right? And if we understand that, and if we walk in that, we are gonna look vastly different than we do today. And we see that so strongly in the character of Matthew, someone who struggled in his past, I believe took advantage of people in the past as a tax collector. And then we're seeing the transformation of that to something completely different, something more than just an organizer for Christ, but a follower of Christ and someone who can fully embody what a disciple of Christ looks like. Truthfully, I can't wait for the chosen season three. It's going to be amazing, but make sure you stick around because I have some very, very good theories about what's upcoming, including episode three of season three, the one that Dallas always writes. It's going to be interesting. And if I'm right, this episode is going to be amazing. And I'm gonna keep a keen eye as more behind the scenes footage comes out from Dallas and The Chosen, all the actors and actresses. I'm gonna be following all of them so that I can get as much information for you guys as I possibly can about season three, what's upcoming, and how they're doing on the production as a whole. So if you enjoyed this content and you wanna see more about how The Chosen can impact us in a biblical way, then please stick around, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna go above and beyond and really help us to build our ministry, we have a brand new feature here on YouTube called the thanks button. Right below this video and every video, you could leave us a little donation if you'd like to. A $2 donation, a $5 donation, and if you're really generous, all the way up to a $50 donation would be amazing. And it would help us to continue to run this ministry, get the equipment that we need, and to continue making these videos. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for being part of our community and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.